Hello friends, I am Kishore Patwarthan and uh, in this talk, I will be uh, dealing with our experiences. I will be rather share, sharing our experiences with reference to educational research in Ayurveda. Now what is educational research? So, systematic collection and analysis of data related to the field of education happens to be educational research. Now, this educational research could include several areas such as student learning, teaching methods, teachers training, classroom dynamics, assessment and examination and many more. Coming to the status of Ayurveda education in India, at present we have more than 300 Ayurvedic colleges that run undergraduate programs and out of these around 200 colleges they also run postgraduate programs and more than 220 colleges were actually established in the past 30 to 35 years out of these 300 colleges around 220 colleges were established in the past 30 or 35 years so there has been a mushrooming in the a number of colleges especially during last three to four decades and this mushrooming is still continuing this is one important aspect that we must look into when we discuss Ayurvedic education uh, in general and Ayurvedic educational research in particular now there are many challenges that have been perceived uh, one of the important concerns happens to be the quantity versus quality of education so quality of education possibly does not match with the quantity of Ayurvedic colleges that are coming up. Then poor infrastructure and poor clinical exposure in these colleges, especially in the new colleges, uh, the infrastructure is often very poor and uh, the number of patients visiting these hospitals is uh, comparatively less and hence students do not get a good clinical exposure. Uh, teaching is more of textbook based and uh, there is minimal practical training. So most of the teaching happens to be textbook based and uh, when it comes to practical training it is often uh, very uh, poor or at least inadequate. Redundant methods of teaching and learning. Still most of the colleges they follow old methods of teaching and learning which are actually redundant uh, then redundant methods of examination and assessment uh, poor exposure to good research and publications and uh, lastly the academic dishonesty like ghost teachers ghost students and so on so these are some of the commonly perceived challenges considering these challenges actually we took up a systematic study in 2005 since 2005 we are in this domain of educational research in Ayurveda and uh, uh, surprisingly and unfortunately the educational research happens to be one of the least explored areas in case of Ayurveda uh, only a few researchers and uh, groups of researchers are currently involved in educational research and our team happens to be uh, one of the uh, teams that is continuously working in this field since last 15 years or so. We actually to begin with we conducted a nationwide survey where all interns, PG students and teachers were defined as our population and we uh, uh, took random cluster sampling method and we included around 32 colleges from uh, north, east, south and west zones. So all colleges in one zone were considered as one cluster. A list of uh, 242 Ayurvedic colleges was taken as a sample frame. At that point of time around 242 colleges were there in existence. So those colleges were taken as the sample frame and the inclusion criteria was 
that at least 10% of colleges from each geographical zone covering a maximum number of states and uh, around 32 colleges were included under this criteria and uh, a total of uh, 1022 participants from 18 states and union territories responded to a validated questionnaire and we focused our investigation into these particular domains so we wanted to know what kind of exposure our students are getting to basic clinical skills what employability opportunities are there for our students then do our students and teachers find the current curriculum relevant whether the teachers and students find teaching methods employed in the ayurvedic colleges relevant and effective then uh, what are the global challenges that are perceived by this population and uh, what are the entrepreneurship opportunities that they can visualize uh, then perception regarding the ideal mode model of uh, medical education for india and personal relevance of ayurveda in their personal lives day to day lives so these are certain domains that were specifically focused in our questionnaire and we developed a validated questionnaire and we distributed this among uh, the different colleges and as long as clinical skills are concerned uh, our results showed that our students were not trained in handling clinical emergencies of primary healthcare level through ayurvedic methods and uh, they did not have good exposure to a variety of cases uh, they were also not trained in areas such as uh, care of terminally ill patients geriatrics drug and alcohol abuse and uh, they were also not trained well in the procedures such as panchakarma and kshara sutra and uh, 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 our study also indicated that our students had uh, very poor basic skills of physical examination diagnosis and management of common clinical conditions so this was a revelation actually though we had some idea that the quality of education in ayurveda was not up to the mark but there was no such systematically conducted study available to show this but our study was one of the first studies to show this and document this and we published we were able to publish this in a good journal evidence based complementary alternative medicine and at that point of time this journal was uh, being published uh, by oxford university press one of the reputed journals in the complementary alternative uh, systems of medicine areas so this paper we published the ayurveda education in india how well are the graduates exposed to basic clinical skills and this uh, caught attention of many policy makers and uh, uh, many researchers in the field and uh, actually this possibly has contributed to uh, further reforms that ayurvedic education system uh, witnessed in the form of revision and reviewing and restructuring of the curriculum and so on so second domain was about curriculum so our study showed that uh the curriculum of graduate level ayurvedic education was not in tune with global challenges like introduction to intellectual property rights was not included in the curriculum essentials of standardization of medicinal products was not included a uh, toxicity evaluation of the medicinal products it was not there in the curriculum essentials of healthcare management was also not dealt with introduction to cultivation and man- marketing of medicinal plants this was also not uh, uh, there in the curricula uh, uh, training in standard methods of research and communication this was also lacking so uh, we published these findings in another journal called international journal of ayurveda research so this also caught the attention of uh, several policy makers and uh, researchers in the field of ayurveda Uh, curriculum and teaching methods uh this was another domain that we looked into the textbook based teaching 
was the one that was most dominant as per the perceptions of our sample and uh, teaching was mainly memory based not application oriented uh, many outdated topics were still there in the curricula too much of subjectivity in teaching the subject was there and uh, examinations were uh, memory based and they did not assess the higher order thinking skills so these were certain findings that our study uh, came out with this also was published in another journal being published from national institute of ayurveda uh, jaipur so graduate level ayurvedic education relevance of curriculum and teaching methodology now this uh, work basically paved way for our future journey so our further work depended completely on this foundational work that we first carried out afterwards we focused on these six major areas for uh, further work uh, first is related to generating the teaching resources then teaching learning methods third is developing standard clinical assessment tools uh, fourth is publication standards fifth is examination assessment and sixth one is policy issues so i'll be uh, discussing one by one uh, what we have done in uh, uh, contributing to each of these areas so first is related to generating the teaching resources actually as soon as we took up our fundamental study that i showed you a short while ago we also started simultaneously with uh, uh, designing good reading material for teachers and also for students so this was one textbook which we published uh, uh, it cannot be called a textbook rather it is a reference book and it is it has been translated to hindi also by one of our students and in this book we tried to uh, reorganize and rearrange the topics of uh, ayurvedic physiology under the headings of contemporary physiology for example the role of liver and spleen in erythropoiesis so whatever references were there in ayurveda they were all clubbed together and they were rearranged similarly the role of uh, bone marrow in erythropoiesis and role of stomach in erythropoiesis so all such relevant uh, descriptions in human physiology uh, were rearranged in terms of the contemporary understanding of uh, human physiology and the entire physiology has been arranged in this manner because uh, i come from uh, banaras hindu university and uh, uh, bhu stands for the integrative approach in ayurveda we never uh, uh, supported the isolation of ayurveda from the contemporary science we always uh, have supported the idea that ayurveda should always be supplemented and complemented with the the contemporary science only then ayurveda can grow so with this view we have always been trying the integrative approaches of understanding ayurveda so this was one of the uh, efforts which was uh, published in the form of a book then second attempt we made in this aspect and we published another paper the title of which is the history of the discovery of blood circulation unrecognized contributions of ayurveda masters fortunately we were able to publish this in one of the reputed journals of uh, physiology being published by american physiological society the name of the journal is advances in physiology education and possibly for the uh, first time any uh, article related to ayurveda was published in this journal here we described the known contributions the recognized contributions of uh, different scholars to the history of discovery of blood circulation and we also uh, uh, proposed that the contributions from ayurvedic textbooks also must be recognized in the literature so we 
explained what are the contributions of Charaka Samhita with reference to blood circulation. Then Bhela Samhita, Sushrutha Samhita, Ashtangradaya, Shangadhar Samhita and so on. So uh, this paper was also received well by academia and uh, students. The Life Science Teaching Resource Community, it recommends uh, this paper uh, to be uh, taken as a teaching resource. Uh, well, uh, the History of Physiology group took notice of this work and uh, uh, it included uh, the summary of this work in its newsletter and we are still continuing with generating the good teaching resources and we have recently taken up a project from Ministry of Human Resource Development, Government of India and we are uh, hosting several uh, quality teaching resources in the form of video lectures, uh, presentations and articles authored by various experts in the field across the country on a, a web portal uh, and this is called Ayurveda Network and we are still continuing with the uh, endeavor of generating good teaching resources.